Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're gonna do one of the most simple Korean hot pots. It's called mandu jonggol. Mandu means dumplings, jonggol means hot pot. Put the two together and you got yourself a fantastic meal. Now everyone should have some form of dumplings in their vicinity. So pick out an assortment of two, a minimum of two, less than two, you're an amateur. And then I'm gonna show you how to add that Korean spice. You gotta add that Korean spice so you can eat it without it getting um, kind of dull and repetitive. That spice. It's life. So for this hot pot, we can go two ways. It's kind of like a choose your adventure. The first way is using bone broth. So I've introduced this before. At Korean markets, they sell what's called sagul broth, and it's made by boiling uh, beef bones. And since it's made from beef bone, it has a very savory, very uh, just homely feeling. That's one way. And the second way is our traditional way, just using an anchovy kelp broth. Perfect time to use one of these broth bags. Since it's feeling like kind of sticky outside, it's humid, let's go with the light version right here. Actually, it's been a while since we've made anchovy kelp broth from scratch. Let's save this for later. And I wanna show some of our newer neighbors uh, how to get jiggy with it. Pull out some dried anchovies here. Step one, say hello to the anchovy. Hello. Then use your fingers, very easy. You can split it in half. And on the bottom, you'll see it's dried innards, the caca. You can remove this because it'll make it bitter. As far as the head, you can either leave it on or take it off. Today, I'll just leave it on, no problem. And then just repeat, we want maybe 10 to 12 of these. I'm very impressed by the quality of the anchovy, look it. No discoloration, its skin is bright silver, none of the scales are coming off. Beautiful. All right, and one thing that I like to do, I like to quickly stir fry this there's no oil or anything inside just give it 15 to 20 seconds until you hear maybe a slight crackle again we don't want to burn this this kind of helps get rid of any fishy smell in the broth then i have five cups of water and then we had dry tashima how much should i use i usually do an iphone worth wow i haven't done this in a long time <whistles> feels like i'm back and this one is totally optional but i do want to add some dry shrimp for some extra flavor just grab the handful Toss it in. When it comes up to boil, we want to take out the dashima pieces because they release a bitter flavor if they boil for too long. So just pick that out. Then reduce the heat to about a medium and let it gently boil for about 10 minutes. We're going to start off with two tablespoons of gochukaru, then one tablespoon of fish sauce, then two tablespoons of soup soy sauce. You can use regular soy sauce as well, no worries. Two tablespoons of mirin or rice wine. That's one, two, then one tablespoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of chili oil. You should find this in uh, most Asian marts. And this just adds a, a fuller body to the spicy taste. I uh, really like it. Give this a good mix. And then you see a layer of that hot chili oil on top. It almost kind of reminds me of Chinese cooking, like a Chinese dipping sauce. All right, and after around 10 minutes, scoop this out and we'll just set this aside for now. And the best thing about hot pot, open your refrigerator, see what's inside, and then the remaining few, go buy those, and then it's just the perfect way to eat vegetables. One vegetable, which you probably don't have in the refrigerator handy, is a small Napa cabbage. This is not the huge one which we use to make traditional uh, kimchi. But it's nice to have one vegetable to be that, that uh, serve as a filler. I think this one's gonna be it. All right, I'm gonna just cut this in half. Then I'm gonna give this another cut. I'm gonna just use this half, tip off. The small pieces on the inside, they're good enough by itself. No need to cut. The outside layer, all right, that was pretty quick. There's a high correlation between the number of mushrooms you put in and the deliciousness of the soup. I'm gonna do some oyster mushrooms. Let's just chop off the and then just split them apart with your hands. Then let's do some shiitake mushrooms. You can cut them thick as well. Perfect time for some bok choy. I haven't used these babies in a while. Maybe a quarter. And then we're gonna do some spring onions, of course. All right, and then I'm gonna use some of that red chili pepper and then a green one for some extra heat. And then this last ingredient, it's gonna be hard to find if you don't have a Korean mart, but 
it's totally unnecessary i just wanted to introduce it it's called crown daisy in korean it's called sutkat and we use it in spicy korean dishes especially spicy seafood korean dishes or hot pots like meuntang which is this very spicy seaweed one i don't think we've made that we should we chop off the end i like to give it one more chop but we're not going to stop in there we're going to add in some dubu some korean tofu uh, we can add this hard one in but today sundubu which is that silken tofu all right nice thick rings and what you got is sundubu mandu jongol speaking of mandu where the heck is our mandu at the first one is my favorite is korean kimchi mandu and then the iconic mul mandu in english that translates to water dumplings these little buggers when you're cooking shin ramen and it's bubbling away you throw a few of these in here perfect all right guys we have a little new addition to our family whoa what is this this is a pot for our chongol now this is so fancy i'm sick of looking at that blue pot that we always use so <laughs> yeah. good idea layer the bottom with these cabbages then with our chunky salsa I'm gonna put maybe one spoonful here, actually two. All right, and then let's treat this like bibimbap. Uh, let's try to get as pretty as we can. All right, then our dumplings. I want a straight line, fellas. And then finally, a little bit of our crown daisies. Put a little crown on top. Beautiful. Ah 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 ah. And of course, some of the ingredients are gonna be left over. Just throw them in as you eat. All right, and now let's add our broth to the mix. Give your sauce one more mix and. And then neighbors, where should we add it? I think we'll aim for that spot right there. Now this part is up to you. If you can handle Korean spice, put it all in. Everything. But if your Korean vocabulary is limited to 안녕하세요, <laughs> hold back on the spice. Uh, put in a little less. And there it is, my friends. The ultimate mandu chonggol. Let's start this baby up. And then while you wait, we're going to get some rice. And once it comes up to boil, if you taste the broth now, it's not going to taste deep at all. Uh, you still need to give it some time to uh, cook together as one. Give the ingredients a stir around. And from here, this is the key step. Let it reduce. Let that broth reduce for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And after 10 to 15 minutes, the broth is going to taste a lot deeper now. Let's give it a taste. Patience is virtue. That's right. And look at that mandu. I want a lot of those dumplings. Yeah? Yep. All right. And a lot of vegetables. And a lot of tofu. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything, huh? All right, Katie, here's yours. <gasps> rice ready. Yes, guys, this is pretty spicy, so you're going to need a cup of rice right next to it, all right? I'm going to show you how to eat this. Take a mandu, split it in half, and then eat it with the rice. Simple as that? Uh-huh. <laughs> and as this stew cooks down, if you want to add a little bit of ramen or some noodles, go ahead and do that. Bon appetit, guys. Bye-bye! Bon appétit!